Join us at Pole Pole, where Dorcas Vinkovic shows us a new perspective of what the African community is doing now. Welcome to another epic episode. We are here at Pole Pole in the heart of Melbourne City. I'm your host, Dorcas Utkovic, and this is Oz African TV. In the tent, I'm joined by Enfa Jones, a businessman, recording artist, and all round cool guy. Lorraine Nguenya is also here to talk about her work at Useful Link. Then we'll go around Melbourne City to see what's happening in our community. But before all that, let's get started in the kitchen with Chef Stolly. Hello, Chef Stolly. Hi. I know you're making something from your childhood today, very special. Yes. Can you tell me about it? Um, I want to make rugali, which mm -hmm. is the heart of Mauritian cuisine. Um, it's used in everything from dolpuri mm -hmm. to poisson sali. So it's just right. a nice um, spicy tomato based sauce mm -hmm. um, that you can use for anything at home. And what are we going to eat it with today? Um, I'm going to cook it with a bit of octopus and we're going to serve it on injera, mm -hmm. um, which is an Ethiopian pancake. And we're going to have a little canapé. That sounds fabulous. If you would like to cook with us, feel free to jump on our website and let us know your thoughts about today's show using hashtags OzAfricanTV, OzAfrican and A New Perspective. Now, I'm going to leave Chef Stolly to whip up his magic and we're going to meet my first guest. Anyone who loves the Australian hip hop scene will know my next guest, but his profile stretches beyond his pioneering role within the hip hop culture. He's a recording artist, DJ, a celebrated athlete, business and family man, as well as citizen of the world. Whether it be through his creative or business ability, he actively and positively contributes in our community. And for Jones joins me now, and I'm so happy to welcome you to Oz African TV. Pleasure to be here. I grew up with a really interesting view on life and culture, where I never, I never felt like I had to be Aussie or I had to be African. I was always really comfortable with the understanding of both cultures and being proud of both cultures. Yeah, I never really got caught up in feeling offended by people because I used to get offended by everybody so after a while I was like actually I'm fine my mother loves me my friends love me there's something wrong with you what's happened so I started looking into people and you know really considering where they were coming from whether it was yeah. positive or negative yeah and more reading the inside of people which I guess led to reading into myself and writing lyrics rather than just complaining to my mother who was already dealing with enough 1200 techniques mm. That's, you know, you guys were, um, you know, trendsetters, if I could say, you know, in terms of the hip hop scene here in Australia. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the group and, and how it feels for you to have played such a pivotal role in the, in the hip hop culture? By the time I moved to Melbourne straight out of high school, I, my brother was living somewhere and we just started vibing out. I had freestyle over funk grooves and, and Pearl from 1200s heard about these two brothers that were down here and he came and he was full of life and character and we just started hanging out with him and so the journey led to yeah a pretty amazing experience to being playing on those big day out stages playing a lot of venues that hadn't had any hip-hop based music in the doors yet mm -hmm. so we had to butter up a lot of rooms that a lot of people now just go into and expect it's like um. man i remember this room i remember the sound man you don't know what i did to make them like us to allow you guys in <laughs> You're very active in the community, as I mentioned, and whether it be through performing in small gigs, free gigs, you know, big gigs, whatever, mm. um, you do do that. But off note is your business, your family business, Cafe sure. Kalimba. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and why you decided to go into um, hospitality mm. as a business? Well, hospitality, I think most people you'll meet in hospitality are usually musicians or artists or people who are trying to do something else and that's the work that allows them that flexibility. I had a little bit of savings and an opportunity f on a site that a friend of mine was an architect in this building. We thought, well, maybe we can infuse the things we love 
yeah. all the things we would like to experience in cafes. I'm a bit, as much as I love the sourdough toast, I'm a bit bored of it. How can we do it differently? And we started thinking about, oh, what about waffles and oh, savoury waffles? Oh, we can make green savoury waffles. Oh, what can we put in them? Let's <laughs> add kale and this and that. And the site we're in used to be a music studio. And a lot of my friends used to record in this space. Yeah. Uh, to have a food and musical connection, mm -hmm. we named it Kalimba after the, the instrument, the yeah. Kalimba, and we refurbished a piano that was going to get destroyed and made it a table. And it's a small space, but it feels nice. Yeah, and and you know, obviously, with the business and mm. performing and family, you're obviously so busy. Yeah. How do you how do you balance it out? How do you you know achieve work life balance? Um, it involves not being completely self centered. You know, I only have small windows of time to do music now. So when I do it, it's it's on and I give everything I have versus just kind of, you know, just writing throwaway verses. Oh yeah, I'll just jump on that track. It's kind of like, oh. You've had such, you know, an interesting path so far. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your highlights and, you know, any challenges uh, in your creative practice? Um, I mean, there's so many highlights. The first time you're on stage is a highlight, I mean, but the first big day out I did with 1200 Techniques was pretty awesome and we played this, I think it was the Boiler Room Tent. We were the first band of the day and yeah. we had just started getting a bit more radio circulation. People were listening to our music yeah. and doors were about to open. It was empty and I was sitting backstage like feeling really down, like this is going to suck, no one's going to watch mm -hmm. us, no one's here. About a minute before playing, the t t uh, tour stage manager comes up, he's like, you guys ready? It's packed out there. And I was like, what? Really? I remember peeking a look and just seeing all these people and they saw me wow. like, yeah! I was probably 20, 21 or 22 at the time, 21 maybe, and it's just, oh my goodness. Yeah. So seeing that and rocking that crowd was amazing. I actually was so excited I could barely get through the set because I was too <laughs> amped for the first two tracks. And, and just leading up to things like being able to see uh, Roots Maneuver in a record store in London and being like, oh man, we um." We met in Australia, I took you to, he's like, oh man, flashback and let's hang out and hanging out with a guy like yeah. that. Yeah, and I know there's one that happened just recently. We're doing this project called Cool Out Sun, which is very um, Afro-percussive based. Yeah. And so for us, music is um, just about calling on what feels right. It's, yeah. it, 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 we hear about things like appropriation and that, and it kind of gets confusing, especially when you're us, because they're like, well, how much of us can appropriate? Um, is 50% of me allowed? Like, <laughs> how, how does this work? You know, it just, it's just music and it feels right. And the music I've been writing with these guys for me has been so much fun. And uh, I really feel like, for, at least lyrically for me, it's, and creatively, I feel like it's the best work I've done yet. And yeah. Cool Out Sun is, has been amazing. And I feel like that's where I need to head yeah. from now on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Hey. That was that was a lot. I loved it. Lo loved it. It was great. Cheers. Um, and you're gonna stick around because you're gonna perform for us. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do something solo, which is mm. hands and feet and this and that. Exciting. So be sure to stick around for that. But to find out more about everything that's happening on the show, be sure to jump on our website. And now let's go meet my next guest. <laughs> What happens when university students graduate? You wouldn't be wrong to think that they're certain about embarking on a lifetime journey through their chosen career path. However, this reality is at a distance for most. In fact, it is said that it could take more than three years for new graduates to land full-time employment. My guest today has decided to do something about this dilemma. Following her own frustration, she created a platform to empower young people to begin to take ownership of their careers. The founder and youth advisor at Useful Link, Lorraine Nguenya, joins me now. Thank you so much Thank for you coming. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, so, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do at Useful Link? Right. Um, I think the first thing I need, I'll probably tell you is my frustration as to how I started Useful Link. Yeah. So, I was, um, you know, adulting as you do, going <laughs> through uni. I couldn't wait to get a job so I could finally pay my own bills, be independent, you know, that kind of feel. Mm -hmm. And then I finished uni and I couldn't get a job. Eight months later, I'm still sitting at home. I started it out of frustration. Mm -hmm. And what I do at Useful Link is I try and deal with the youth unemployment issue. 
So what I do is I run workshops for them um, around, you know, employment, around leadership and around personal development. But on the other hand, I'm also talking to government and businesses for them to realize that this is a big issue yeah. and that, you know, we are not only are we the future, we're the now. So we need jobs now. Just how difficult is it for people to to get the work? What 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 are some of the stories that you're hearing? Oh, like okay. Um, recently, I've just launched uh, my one-on-one -on -one services, and the number of students who are coming to see me who've just finished uni, yeah. and they're just like, I'm applying and I'm applying mm -hmm. and I'm applying, and there's nothing. Yeah. Um, I must say though that sometimes the struggle is that you know sometimes they just don't know how. People show me their resumes, and I'm just like, okay, we need to work on this. Yeah. You know, yep. and just like you know other little skills that you probably need that if you really think about it our education system doesn't actually teach you some of those things wow. the world of employment has changed and yep. young people are only finally catching up talking about those <laughs> skills that young people don't get at uni mm -hmm. what are some of the specific ones that you think the university should you know should include in general so at the most basic level definitely resume writing and interview skills yeah but other things you know like like I said, employment has changed. Getting your foot in the door is not just, it's not just such an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, teach people, how do, you, how do I get my foot through the door? How do I be innovative in how I get involved? Do you think that universities or, you know, tertiary education is, you know, it's, it's, is a false advertising in a way, like, you know, unattainable, mm -hmm dream of sorts right i don't think it's selling false like i don't think it's false advertising because you know i see the value of you know of an education and all of that yeah. but i'm also like from the thought process that i feel like uni can be doing a bit more on the other hand i think that you know young people we just need to tie up our shoes and you know like really try and work hard mm -hmm. to get to where we need to get to you didn't go to uni to become a business <laughs> person no, 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 but here you are not as the an plan. entrepreneur <laughs> what what are some of the challenges that you meet you know in your business and and what are some of the highlights so initially when I started it was hard yeah. you know what I mean like you know I was sending people like the most basic things you know you're trying to get in touch with the organization I just directly send them an email they don't even know who I am why would they get in touch with me you know what I mean so just like learning the ins and outs of how to approach people how to communicate you know with your clients and that kind of stuff that was initially difficult my highlight is when you know I run a workshop or I have a one-on-one -on -one session with a young person and I see them actually getting it yeah you know what I mean yeah. and I see them being like you know what I'm going to implement this and then I'm going to go through this step and go through that step to get my foot in the door and that just like that brings me like like such joy <laughs> I can't I can't express how much joy it brings yeah. me that's probably like my favorite part and to young people who are watching now you know either at uni as freshmen or grad year, mm -hmm. what, what, what can you give them as advice? My advice is you need to think about, okay, you now have a degree, but are you employable? That is very, very, like it's a very serious thing because being employable is, you know, is about knowing how to be innovative. It's knowing how to be a leader because, you know, these days, like you don't just get a position description and you kind of have to yeah. do exactly what it is. You're going to be asked to do things in your job that you're just like, wait a minute, I don't know how to use this. I don't know how to do that. And it's like, try and get those skills. Volunteer in ways that you can get those skills. Yeah. Pick up the phone and say to an organization, oh, hey, my name is such and such. And, you know, I'm kind of just looking for a bit of experience. When they see that you're keen, mm -hmm. it makes a difference. So be keen and really like think about new ways to step out and get your foot in the door. Thank you so much. Thank that was amazing. Um, and as promised, and for Jones is going to perform. But while he gets ready, let's go to the kitchen and see how Chef Stolly is going. <laughs> I see you've made some progress. Do you want to tell us what you've done and what else you still have to do? Well, I finally diced the onions, garlic and ginger, mm -hmm. chopped the tomatoes, onto the chilies that I'm going to saute and then I'm going to cook it really nice and slow. Awesome. And you can cook with us by jumping on our website and feel free to connect with us on our social media pages. But for now, here's a special treat for you right here at Pole Pole and for Jones performing live. A little piece called Yalele Skins from the Cool Out Sun, forthcoming LP. Yeah. Skins, I run with them. 
whatever color them rainbow people created equal come on let's double them some try dividing in lie and deny a man a woman and babies from bosom until we're crying hands a swollen and broken hollowing throats choking so we sing from our souls broken spirits open like our reason mercenaries spill hemoglobin ancient blood injected with dope to kill our dopamine i mean personality i see the seeds they sowing in i feel no man or bad shagun they holster in my only fear is to not hear and see my kids again so i teach my kids to keep their heads full of wisdom i say they'll try to beat you senseless they'll attack relentless for 40 days and nights and 40 ways i try to tempt us but you must stay resilient because your aura is brilliant a single be never let man can overthrow their millions no you're not a minion this world is your dominion recognize lies speak truth they're not opinions don't be dealt their dealings yeah push through the ceilings if you don't need what they're offering then you're worth a million i mean a billion a trillion quadrillion mega zillions a mind locked in a prism leads a body to a prison block follow your vision up your roots are indigenous but they'll try to dig you up and prune you to you are indignant look your beautiful pigment predates your religion but god molded you from the clay of the planet you live in life is isn't a given, but a gift that is within. Flee the pigeons for you, the freedom dove of the scriptures written. Fly. That was amazing. That was that was a great little taste of what you do. Where where can people buy or you know see your full music? Um, if you want to see things, the YouTube page is NFA Music. Um, if you want to buy or get some of the music for free, like I've got this Os Afro Sambas, yeah. recorded it with my boy Billy Hoyle, free, it's on the uh, N for Jones, NFA Jones, Bandcamp, dot com, all that, so mostly the Bandcamp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, that There's was iTunes great. and all that, but get the free stuff. Get, get the, the free, free stuff. stuff. It's good stuff, but, but go to iTunes and support as well. Mm. And um, thank you so much. Thank you. But for now, we're going to go to Melbourne and see what's happening around town. While trotting the streets of Melbourne City, I bumped into an awesome, awesome guy. Fellow South African and one of the funniest people ever. The two times Amy Award nominee, Lois Sogola, is in town to perform at Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Naturally, I asked him to stop by at Polo Polo for a quick chat. He obliged and this is what happened. Are you like funny all the time? No. No? What do you do when you're with your friends? Do you just like crack a joke? No, I'm just so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. no? I was thinking that this, this is not good for sound, is it? No, okay. no, no, don't do it. But he didn't say anything. Why don't you say something? No. Now I'll be the. I'll do this the whole episode. And then you're like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I stand in front of people and be long-winded. That's what I do. Oh. While this is his first time in Melbourne, Loiso is a familiar face to Australian audiences through his work on ABC's Their Weekly with Charlie Pickering. Welcome to Melbourne. Thank Welcome to Pelo Pole. Thank you for allowing me through your strict border control. <laughs> It's got nothing to do with me. I went through the same border control myself. So. Yeah, okay. That's cool. I'm just saying thanks for allowing me in. But you're here um, to be um, part of the Melbourne's International oh, Comedy, Comedy Festival. Festival. Yes. And and um, how's that process been so far? It's, it's been great. I did the gala, which is show, which is going to show on Sunday on ABC. And then I've, I've been doing some other stuff like uh, the weekly with mm -hmm. Charlie Pickering. So that's it's been fun. I mean, I've been doing stuff. But I, have, I still wouldn't consider myself busy. busy. <laughs> like, it's not like I'm busy. Yeah, but you were in Sydney. How was Sydney? You had a show in Sydney. I, yeah, I was in Sydney and I did the comedy store in Sydney. It was fun. People came out. Thanks yeah. to the, I had sold out shows. It was really great. So thanks to everyone who came. Thank you. <laughs> anyone, everyone. Making eye contact. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. But, um, and so tell me about the show that you're doing for the, for the um, comedy festival. It's a piece of shit show. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sounds really good. <laughs> the show is cool, man. It's a show I did in Edinburgh. It got mm -hmm. great reviews. And I decided to bring it to Melbourne. I mean, um, I, I've, I've done it in America. I've done it uh, pretty much uh, in South Africa. And then I was like, yo, um, I got invited to do it here in Melbourne. So I'm excited to do it. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's autobiographical. It's political. It's... I talk a lot about myself and my upbringing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what the show is pretty much about. Cool. Yeah. And, so, and, and I know you do, um, you know, you do a lot of satire. So in terms of performing in Melbourne, 
Are you going to touch on anything like, you know, the socio-political no, landscape no, of this? Care. You don't care. I it's don't got nothing care. to do with you. I don't really. I don't. Politics are a very self-centered thing. Yeah. So I don't really. I don't think anyone in Melbourne cares about any other politics except Australian politics. So I shouldn't be expected to care about anyone else's politics except South African politics. So t t I don't really care who's the prime minister. Or <laughs> I don't, I don't really would you would you bring any of the South African politics? Well, I mean, in? not really, because the Melbourne people are not invested in that. I think that satire. I'll, I'll have some satire of the world, but I don't yeah. think it will be particular to Melbourne. There's some yeah. observations that I've made of Melbourne, which I find quite insane. I, I find like. that Melbourne people just complain about the weather the whole time. Oh, it's been raining for the whole month. I'm like, no, it hasn't. <laughs> It rains for about 20% of the day. The rest of the time, it's fine. And this happens, you will be fine. Food. Love There's food. a lot of food. There's a lot of food. There's yeah. a lot of too much Coffee. Do you like coffee? Food. I love coffee. Too much choice for coffee. Too much. Just too much choice. That's the first world. There's too much choice. You have tissue, toilet paper, serviettes. <laughs> and you're like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Like, it's all, toilet paper. It's just all the same thing. It's all paper, soft enough to wipe your ass. But, you know, whatever. I just eat at home because the choices is overwhelming. You lock yourself in your room and order no, room service? No, I don't lock myself oh, in. That's just, close just, the door, I just politely something. close the door, lock myself. Lightly. It makes me sound suicidal now. <laughs> I'm no. a happy person having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having, He's having fun. fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> let's, let's close this fun. And um, we, we closed the fun we closed five the minutes fun. ago. <laughs> well, the fun is just going on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Chef Stolly, these look amazing. Pleasure as always. I can't wait to dig in. But thank you to our wonderful guest, Lorraine. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And thank you to Enfa, who's currently getting ready to give us another performance. But you can find out about everything that happened on today's show by jumping on our website and feel free to connect with us on social media pages. From all of us here at Polo Polo is love and light. See you next time. Uh, yes. Uh, make sure that's to Billy Hoyle. Also for sambas. Yo, this here is the new ish. Be cool, not foolish. Be you, not stupid. Be beautiful. Now let's do this. Look, so let me bring it and sing it and sling it for a minute. Dartly, clock spinning, touch it into the finish. Art we art living and loving, that's the image. Project good thoughts with cohorts and live it. I still believe we'll rise as one. One, 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 one. It's true, my son. Cool outside. <laughs>